Finally, someone on eBay who knows how to package sensitive equipment. This is the Shorn Slim Plus V2. This is version 2, so this is the most recent version. This one is fully sealed. So let's check out what's inside and how it compares to the other one that I have. They've changed the packaging to cardboard instead of foam, probably a little bit more eco-friendly. You can recycle that cardboard. Here we have the same type of instructions as the other one had. The other one is from 2016. This one's really new. 27th of March, 2021. So much newer than the other one that I had. Wow, this one's a lot smaller than the large one. It's uh, quite slim. I'm just gonna push it in Z. So in Z, it looks pretty smooth. A little bit sticky actually, though. Ugh. That's weird that it's sticky like that. It's actually sticking in when I push it up in Z. There's definitely a sticky spot there. Does not feel good. But it's past the zero point. The X and Y side to side is sticky even more so than the other one. It takes a lot of force to push it to the side. I mean, way more force than the other one too. Oops. Um, front to back is a little bit easier. Whoa. That feels like it takes a lot of force. I feel like I'm almost going to break something when I'm pushing it. Huh. I was hoping it would be less force to move the probe tip than the other one. I had to push on that pretty hard. I could take a force gauge and show how much force it takes to push on that. Okay, so after working it for a few minutes, moving around, there's definitely less resistance than initially, but there's still definitely more resistance than the V1 Plus size here that I have already. So this one, the V1 Plus, I thought had uh, some a lot of resistance in the motion, like it's a little bit, feels like a little bit sticky. In practice, when actually using it on the machine, it seems perfectly accurate. It hits the, the zero every time. I've compared it to the traditional methods of edge finding and this is um, right on and much faster. But I was hoping that a newer model of this, which was this one was made just this year, a few months ago, would be less sticky. But it's definitely um, still a good bit of resistance to move the needle. I made a comment about the packaging being renewable compared to the foam and look at that. Yeah, it's actually all cardboard and it actually talks about um, green, solu green packaging solution here. Let's look at some of the noticeable differences besides the size is that the V1 was more like a dial indicator and it could give you um, the ability to use it as a dial indicator at just about any position. The V2 does have markings and the same goes with the, with the V2 plus size. It's got the same minimal markings. Doesn't even show that like the increment of those markings. I assume they're 0 0.01 millimeters, but it's not really uh, treated as a dial indicator anymore. It's really just a, a centering tool, an edge finding tool um, or a Z or a Z finding tool. It's, Pretty smooth in Z initially. Initially, it was getting it was getting stuck in Z, when right about right about here it was getting stuck. But now it seems to have 
worked its way out. The V1 is even smoother in Z. It feels like a, this one feels like a good dial indicator. This one feels damped. There's some damping going on there. The tips are different. The probes are different. This one has, looks like a ceramic shaft that's going to break easier without damaging the probe. If you over travel, this one just has a stainless shaft. So that shaft is designed to bend and it's also designed to, to break up here. This one's probably also designed to break up here, but this one has like a better um, first degree of, of protection here. It also has a through hole here for, for tightening. So that helps you replace the probe tip better. This one does not have a through hole. The V1 doesn't have that. Um, I like the slim because it's shorter. I like that aspect of it. Because the less length you have out, the less chance you have of error because of just run out and stuff like that. You, uh, the shorter you can make this whole thing, the better for accuracy. So especially on, the, some, on, a, on a machine like the Tormach, where it's not a super rigid system, but if you have um, a bigger machine, it might be less of a concern as far as the length. This one, this V1, I mean, I thought it was sticky, but now it feels super smooth and easy compared to the V2. So this feels really nice in comparison. Like I thought I was expecting it to be as like what it feels like this, like a good, like a good dial indicator in X and Y, but I guess you really can't expect that the way that it works, which is basically there's a, like a ball joint knuckle thing and the knuckle pushes the ball up. Uh, so, so this one still going to need a little bit of use to kind of break it in. I think um, it's definitely moving a lot easier, but it still has some resistance to it. And you can see sometimes it doesn't come back all the way. Um, it's almost like it needs gravity there. That, that's I'm pushing pretty hard here, like. Initially, I was pushing so hard that I was afraid of breaking the probe tip. But we'll see in use. I'm going to put, compare it to a regular edge finder and see how accurate it is. This is the most detail I see on the, of the inside. It's actually on the box here. And so you can see the bottom has like a ball that that's kind of where it rotates at. And then here it looks like a sort of like a ball and socket style joint. So I assume that as this bottom piece swings back and forth, it pushes this ball up, which has the rack and pinion. And this is like a dial indicator here, standard dial indicator set up. So any motion in X and Y causes the rack and pinion to, to slide up. Um, a motion in Z pushes directly on the rack and pinions. That's why the motion in Z feels so effortless. 